The shotgun is known as an excellent home defense weapon, but what should you be loading in your shotgun magazine? Let's talk about it. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, I field a lot of questions from our customers, and a lot of folks ask me if they should use birdshot for home defense. I know there's yeah. there's some argument in favor for it, in favor of it. I'm not wild about it, but today we're going to talk about what you really ought to be packing in that home defense shotgun and touch on what's appropriate for hunting as well. Dave, you're absolutely right. And if you have a second, make sure you get down in the description in the pinned comment. Click on that link to get your free $20 off coupon from ammo.com. And while you're down there, make sure you smash the like and subscribe button. Join the channel, become part of the community as we continue to grow here on YouTube. But yeah, bird shot for self-defense. This is one that is very contentious in the shooting community. And in my opinion, it's like if you have to defend your life, you want to make sure you're defending your life with the best ammunition possible. And I just don't think birdshot is really appropriate for taking on two-legged varmints. But I think really the, the smartest approach you can take to uh, home defense ammo is just to look at what police officers keep chambered yep. in, in their own shotguns that they drive around with. Yeah, and that is definitely either buckshot or slug. So let's take these one at a time. Let's talk about buckshot first. Now, the gold standard when it comes to self-defense, in my opinion, is going to be double-op buckshot. And that will look like 0, zero. If you remember the 30-06, that's where it comes from. They are 0. .33 inches in diameter, oh. actually. A double-op buckshot hits surprisingly much harder than a single-op buckshot. And also, you fit generally more pellets to a shell the smaller you go down in size. Yep. And it's dramatic. Buckshot goes from number four to triple lot, from smaller to largest. For every little hundredth of an inch you go up, you're getting a much heavier and, and ultimately much bigger shot pellet. But, yeah, and that's really the name of the game, obviously, when it comes to self-defense, because we want that larger wound channel, we want that penetration, and a bigger bullet or a bigger pellet in this case is gonna help you do that. It can penetrate multiple sheets of plywood. It can end up your neighbor's house if you don't aim it responsibly. But you're not going to get as much penetration as you would with like 22 caliber bullet. That's true. And that's one of the real draws for the shotgun is slowing down that over penetration. Now, yeah, like you said, Dave, if you completely miss, uh, then yeah, you're going to have some problems because it can definitely punch through drywall. Mm -hmm. But when you aim your shots, you put the rounds on target, you really reduce that risk of overpenetration when you're using buckshot. A double-lot buckshell is going to dump about as much kinetic energy into its target as a 308 wind round, but it's splitting up that energy into eight or nine separate projectiles. we got to touch on the smaller buckshot sizes because they have yeah. their proponents, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and this confuses people because number one, number two, number three, number four, when those are buckshot, they're, they're large lead pellets. They're not oh, yeah. to be confused with steel shot, which mm -hmm. is bird shot, which is used for waterfowl hunting, which you really don't want to use for home defense for reasons we don't have to touch on, really. Yeah. You get a lot more pellets as you move down in size. For instance, a number four buckshot pellet that's uh, 0.24 inches. It weighs about 20.7 grains. And uh, like I said, you get 21 pellets per ounce. So you get a much thicker, denser pattern. It's a little mm -hmm. bit more accommodating of poor aim. You're going to get an even lower chance of over penetration. Let's talk about uh, some, there are some frangible buckshot rounds out there that Remington produces. Uh, Dave, what's you been your experience with that? They're made of a compressed copper and uh, usually another non-toxic metal like tin. They're designed to pretty much turn themselves into dust the second mm -hmm. they collide with a surface that's harder than themselves. To be sure, drywall is not harder than a frangible projectile. So a frangible yep. projectile can still pass through drywall. It can still pass through soft tissue, although it does have a pretty good chance of disintegrating while it penetrates or collides with one of these surfaces. Frangible rounds are ideally for training. Some people like it for home defense because they reason that it's going to have a lower chance of overpenetration, which we, we just harp on as something you really do want to avoid. It doesn't eliminate the risk, it does reduce it. Generally, I just don't recommend 
frangible ammo for home defense. Uh, it's just not built for that application. Now let's talk about overpenetration, and that would be, of course, our second uh, choice for home defense ammo for your shotgun, and that is going to be slugs, whether they be rifled or sabo slugs. Uh, the slug is basically a big chunk of metal coming out of that shotgun barrel, and it does a lot of damage, but it's really hard to stop. Yeah, a slug just basically turns a shotgun into a relatively inaccurate rifle. Yep. When I say inaccurate, I mean, I don't mean to diminish the slug. There's guys who can easily put a slug right where they mean to at 200 yards. Oh, yeah. You mentioned rifle, then say but. Mm -hmm. uh, People ask about this all the time, and a rule to it sounds so unintuitive that it's hard to remember. Rifled slug for smoothbore barrel, save it slug for rifled barrel. The save it yep. slug has a little plastic sleeve that helps it engage with the rifling in a rifled mm -hmm. barrel. These are almost never used for home defense. They're they're designed to improve a slug's accuracy. They're, they're really only for hunting. If you're picking up a home defense shotgun, go with the smoothbore. So the thing with the rifle slug when using it for home defense, or any slug for that matter, is it's just not going to stop. It's going to keep going. Now, it's going to do a lot of damage uh, to whatever it hits, but the thing Massive. is it's probably going to keep going, which isn't good. Yeah, it's going to keep going and going. I mentioned the advantage of, of buckshot as you're spreading out all that kinetic energy around eight or nine points of impact. A slug, you basically turned your shotgun into a musket and that yep. thing is just going to keep on hauling. Yep, you got one shot and that's it. Now I will say our recommendation, of course, and what we're going to personally use is buckshot for home defense, but there are a lot of different rounds out there for shotguns, whether they be 12 gauge, 20 gauge, 410, and I wanted to kind of touch on those because you see some of these pop up in different places and they look really cool, but are they really effective? And the interesting one we're going to start off with is basically what we refer to as buck and ball, uh, which is exactly what it sounds like. Yeah, you're talking about these these specialty home defense rounds that, mm -hmm. that they do something a little different. Now, I think the the main appeal with these is their novelty. Yeah, no one in their right mind would would argue that a double out buck shell is anything but massively effective for personal oh, yeah. protection. That said, yeah, you can really stuff any projectile into a shot shell that that will fit there. We've seen some insane shot shells hit the market. Uh, you know, hand loaders will fill them with like broken glass and, mm -hmm. and and tiny bolos. I've seen like two buckshots connected with a wire that yep. look like they'd be truly nasty to take one to the throat. But um, do they work better than buck? I don't know if we have a solid study to defer to. The fact that the cops have never used anything but buckshot or slugs kind of suggests that it's it's more of a marketing ploy. That said, I, I do really like some of the uh, specialized 410 self-defense rounds. Winchester has the defense disc load, yep. which is filled with BB shot, and I think it's like four copper-plated, uh, they look like watch batteries, mm -hmm. these projectiles, and they would do some truly nasty things. Hornady makes one it's uh, it's an FTX slug, which is mm -hmm. a solid lead polymer tipped slug designed for terminal expansion. And that's followed up by two uh, .41 caliber balls. Oh, wow. And and I do like these 410 shells because the 410 is obviously you know the weakest shell you might consider for self-defense. It's just kind of making more effective use of, of the what a limited package can offer. Definitely with the 410, going to have a lot less over penetration potential and having that extra you know, a little bit of oomph with a slug can really help with something like that. But for something like a 12 gauge, it's going to be way too much. If you're using a slug and a 410, you, you might as well have just used a rifle or a handgun, in my opinion. That's fair. And of course, the 410 is being chambered in handguns now, like the Smith & Wesson Governor and the Taurus Judge have become real popular. Of course, those also shoot 45 long Colts. Uh, so it kind of gives you a little flexibility. But yeah, if you like your 410, it, it'll do the job, especially inside the home. Now we have to touch on one of my personal favorite novelty rounds for the 12 gauge, which is the Dragon's Breath round. Now, Dave, do you think this is a good one for self-defense? Basically turns your shotgun into a flamethrower for half mm -hmm. a second. So uh, yeah, if you don't mind burning your house down in the process, you're, you're definitely going to make the next two minutes very miserable for the threat. That's true. Yeah, these things are ridiculous. And of course, if you shoot off any of these, never do it indoors. And when you do it outdoors, make sure you have all the necessary safety equipment there because this stuff shoots out magnesium, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and, that's uh, it. 
highly flammable. But let's talk about some things that people would consider as less than lethal shotgun shells and uh, using those for home defense and their efficacy. Now, I know that one thing that the police will sometimes employ are beanbag rounds instead of using slugs. Now, do you think, David, that's really a good choice for home defense? Absolutely not. I mean, yeah. it's going to slow the threat down, but then mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Because now they're going to be even angrier. No, they're, they're meant for subduing riots. Yeah, and I think that's the important thing to understand is if you're defending your life, you need to defend your life. You need to stop the threat. We're not here to scare them off. We need to be careful when we're looking at some of these specialty rounds for shotgun shells. And I mean, I don't know about you, Dave. Wrapping this up, I'm, I'm just going to stick with my normal buckshot and never look back. One more thought on on a less lethal round for home defense. Okay. Uh, the, the the threat is is not going to know you're using less lethal ammunition. That's true. They're probably they're probably going to think you've shot them with real ammo, mm -hmm. which is going to really underscore the importance of of them achieving their mission of uh, of killing you. So, if anything, it might just uh, make them double down on their immediate efforts to, to to ruin you. So, yeah, bad choice. Must you. Unless you're a riot cop. Definitely. Save those for the professionals. So uh, let's just go ahead and wrap this one up, Dave. I mean, it, it sounds to me like buckshot is just the way to go. It really is. I, I don't know how many other ways I could say it. Double lot, you can't go wrong. Yep. I don't think I could have said any better myself. And uh, if you like shotgun shells, let us know down in the comments what you've got loaded in your self-defense shotgun for your home or for your personal property. And while you're there, of course, make sure you click that like and subscribe button. And we'll see you out on the range.